Fire and say yes to engage the target, and they are right on top of me. Holy shit. Scope up, get underwater. I'll stop. Send a rudder. Oh, damn. I hate when they do that, when they put a large target right on top of me. Alright, let's take a peek through the periscope. Oh, yeah, that's a carrier right there. We got a good target this time. Great great for this first uh, first game on the on here. All right, we need to go ahead and start unloading torpedoes on them. All right, I want you to animation off. Because I don't want to see that every time. That's going to get irritating. And it kind of interrupts my flow. All right, I need to try to target the uh, big ships as quick as possible. There's probably a battleship somewhere. I need to try to, detect, try to get them as quick as possible. Okay, those are all destroyers. Probably going to be a, just a, a battleship somewhere. So far, they haven't detected me. Okay, he's damaged. He'll probably come to a stop. You do enough damage to it. Oh, that's a that's a cruiser. That's a good target right there. Come on, get on lock. Locked. Damn it. Locked on. Okay, where is it? Okay, I probably need to wait just a little bit longer to get past that crew. The carrier. One, two. All right, those are two stern tubes. Good. Let's switch the other the other cruiser. It was hauling ass. Because if they get away, I'm not going to be able to catch them. They're moving way too fast. One, two. Oh, empty my... Oh, wait. Okay, it didn't... Oh, wait. Damn it, they both hit the carrier. That's okay. Wait a little bit longer. Wait a little bit longer. Switch to view full screen here. These two stern torpedoes should get past the carrier now. One, two. Come on, get past the carrier. Okay, good, it did. Oh, damn, one of them. No, they both hit the carrier. Fuck. Now the carrier's sunk. Certain tubes are empty, though. Shit. Problem is, now i got destroyers that are going to catch my ass. Those two, those two white, uh, those two whites there, those are enemy ships. They're heading toward me. Those are destroyers. They'll, they'll track me. The other two ships are going to get away, though. All right, I gotta go down. That's not gonna work. I'll stop. Let's go down. Now the ships that were okay. I know there's a lot. A lot happened right there, real fast. So I'll try to explain what happened. First of all, what you saw there doesn't happen very often, where the ship's right on top of you as soon as the mission starts. That doesn't happen very often. Um, but what happened there was there was a carrier, two two cruisers, and looks like three destroyers. The only ships you really have to worry about attacking you are going to be the destroyers. Carriers will not attack you. Cruisers will not attack you. Underwater, at least. Um, and battleships will not attack you underwater. On the surface, everything will attack you. Even uh, oil tankers and you know, what you think wouldn't be combat ships will still attack you. Underwater, only destroyers will attack. Uh, destroyers and PC patrol craft will attack you. Because those are the only ones that have depth charges. Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to be able to catch them now, so... I did the best I could under the circumstances. What I need to do is I need to try to get away from these guys because these guys can sink me. And I don't want them to do that. Um, what happened then is I fired a couple of torpedoes at the at the carrier. The carrier was that um, that flat top looking looking ship. That was the aircraft carrier. Those things take a lot of torpedoes, so I at least wanted to disable it because if it's disabled, it'll stop and I can come back and get it later. But I sank it luckily, so I got a lot of tonnage out of that. Um, those two ships that you saw me lock on afterwards, both of those were cruisers. I think they were actually heavy cruisers, which means they're they're worth a lot of tonnage as well. So um, I got one. I, I sank one, but the other one I was trying to shoot at got away. And any ship that can't uh, fight submarines will just run, and they move at a speed of they, they can move at a speed, max speed of like thirty six knots. And even the best submarine can't go beyond 20 knots. So there's no way in hell I'm going to catch those ships. So those that get away are gone. They're, they're gone. I'm not catching them. So the only thing I can do now is either try to run from these destroyers, which seem to be tracking me pretty damn well, or try to gun, or try to torpedo them. Now, the only thing about this game, well, not only, not everything, not everything is historically accurate. There's some things that are not historically accurate. Like, for example, at 127 feet deep, I wouldn't be able to torpedo these, torpe torpedo these ships. In this game, I can. In real life, a submarine at 127 feet would not be able to uh, hit enemy shipping on the surface. Not without just extreme, extreme cases of luck. Because this screen here that you see doesn't really exist. 
you wouldn't like have a map on the on, in the middle of the, the submarine's uh, bridge or control or command deck that has a grid and you see enemy shipping moving around like this. You would this is only for the game's sake. The only accurate zones in, in the game are the bridge, the periscope, which you saw me looking through a moment ago, and then the TBT, which is basically just like a bridge to, bridge periscope. Um, as you can see on the screen here, we're underwater, 127 feet deep, and the black squares are enemy, are enemy shipping, obviously. Now, I think there were three cruisers, at least. One of them I hit. The other one I was trying to torpedo, but the, the carrier was blocking my torpedoes, unfortunately. So him and then whatever the first ship was, I think two ships got away. They were way up there. They were moving pretty fast toward the north and toward the northwest. They got away. So I'm not gonna be able to catch them. So my only option now is to try to get these guys. My strategy for trying to get these guys is to actually have them come right at me, but within my control. What I'm trying to do is trying to get away from them because they're. Again, downside not having sound is right now you actually hear pinging noises because they're trying to ping for me. They're trying to they're trying to find me. Like every like three or four seconds you'd hear a beep 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 noise because they're they're trying to search for me. So what I want to do is I want to get out of their search range, and I want to try to torpedo them. What I don't want to try to do is try to shoot from 127 feet deep. While I can do that, and while I can hit them and sink them from the using this strategy, I am not very good at it. Because what I could do is I could like guess the angle that that my in this case my stern torpedoes are kind of facing. By the way, where I know I'm throwing a lot of information at once. The yellow the yellow line is obviously our submarine, and the black dot that you see on the front indicates the nose of the the nose of the ship. And the blue line indicates the wake or how fast the ship is moving, which is why these black lines have such long blue lines. They're moving at 30-something knots. I'm only moving it at 10. The longer the line is, the faster the ship is moving. Um, <clears throat> if I wanted to, I could actually adjust my bearing, which is the middle number that you see on the middle bar, the top number that you see on the middle box here. I could adjust that bearing to probably about, 125 degrees, give or take, and fire a stern torpedo and hope that it hits a ship that's running right along that line. I'm not very good at trying to shoot that way. What I would rather do is get away from them, go to periscope depth, lock onto one of them, go to the surface, get their attention. As stupid as that sounds, I'm, you know, I'm supposed to be stealthy here because I'm a submarine, as stupid as that sounds, it actually works for me. I'll get their attention, firing the deck gun at them, whatever. It'll draw all three ships coming right at me with their bows facing me. They're not going to be doing all this turning shit. So with them all coming right at me, I can fire torpedoes right down their throat. I hit them much easier that way because they won't. Because with them turning like this, I can fire a torpedo and miss them all. But when they come right at me, I can't miss. All right, now they're, they've given up looking for me because they're all trying to rejoin the party. So I need to get back. They're trying to rejoin their, their friends that are going way up there. So I need to get to periscope depth and try to draw them try to draw them to me before they get too far apart. I want them all to kind of come at me in the same direction and the same relative range. If they come at me from three different sides, I'm going to have a problem. But if they come at me all from my rear, then I'm fine. I can actually torpedo them all as they're coming. It doesn't take long for you to target from here to here to here if they're just a few degrees apart. If they're coming at me from three different sides, i got to hit this guy here. they got to turn way over here, hit this guy over here, and turn way over here, hit this guy over here. At, when they're moving at 30 knots, that's damn hard to do. Not to make it right on top of me. This guy up here in the north is going to be a problem. Uh-oh. I think I've already been caught. I better do this quickly. Turn it the wrong way. This guy in the north, I think, has already seen me. Damn it. Come on, lock on. There we go. Oh, he's closing. I'll stop. I think he, th he think he might have spotted me, maybe. Uh, he's going a pretty steady course, so he may not have spotted me. Let's go ahead and throw a torpedo out there. If nothing else, I'll hit him. And if I, if I don't sink him, I'll at least draw the attention of the other two at me. Let's zoom in here and get a full screen here and watch this torpedo. Because if it hits, it'll draw the other two ship the other two destroyers to me. Okay, it missed him, but it drew, it drew his attention. So if it drew his attention, the other two are definitely going to be coming my way. 
You're not turning very fast. Did it not get their attention? All right, now he should be coming right at me. There we go. There we go. That's what I want to come right at me. Come on. Come on. Let's hope that one torpedo sinks him. Didn't, so fire a second one and start backing up. And got him. That's sinking. Okay, since those two hits, those two hits were loud. Those other two would definitely heard that. So they're definitely going to be turning now trying to find out what the hell that noise was and why their one of their buddies just went down. All right, lock on. Okay, yeah. They don't know exactly where I am, but they're curious about why their uh, their buddy just went down. So they, they realize that their the submarine that they lost is still around. Excuse me, I apologize for my sniffling. I got kind of nosy issues. All right, let's go ahead and stop the sub for a moment. Actually, let's keep backing up. Let's go to the surface. Definitely make sure they're coming right at me. Make sure I watch my death. Make sure I'm sorry. Okay. That gun. All right, crash dive. Go back to periscope depth. I just want to surface long enough to kind of th get a gunshot at them. Make sure let them know, hey, I'm right here. I want them to make sure they come right at me. I don't want them to have any doubts. One, two. All right, please tell me I have a torpedo. Okay, one torpedo left for that other ship. Lock on. That'll at least slow that one down. Those two should sink this one coming right, come over here, uh, right at me, the farthest one away. This one here should at least slow that one. Oh, right, I sunk them both. Excellent. All right, I survived. I sunk a carrier, and I took down all, took down three destroyers. Problem is now those two cruisers escaped. That's a lot of tonnage I lost, but oh, well, nothing I can do about it now. All right, they're both gone. Let's turn right here. Try to go the direction they were going. I'll speed up the game a little bit here. And they're probably not going. I'm still not going to catch them. I don't know why I'm trying. Yeah, they got away. Oh, was a second carrier in there. Damn it! Damn it! I hate it when I miss carriers and battleships because those guys are worth a ton. No pun intended. A ton of tons. And you see that one aircraft carrier at the top is worth thirty-three thousand tons. That's a huge. That's a huge amount of a huge amount right there. So I so I missed one cruiser and one carrier. So you see, even even heavy cruisers don't weigh any weigh weighs a third as much as those aircraft carriers. That's a lot of tonnage I lost there. I could have had sixty thousand tons just in the aircraft carriers alone. All right, let's go ahead and check our stats here real quick. When I got a moment, uh, we are full on torpedoes. No damage. I didn't take any damage from anything. All right, let's float around the ocean a little bit more, see if we can... Now, again, it's completely randomized, so um, the the encounters are randomized, so it's not like I can go toward the northeast and maybe somehow catch up with those with that car or that cruiser and carrier that got away. That's not going to happen. All right, as you can see, we now engage our medium targets. Let's go ahead and do that one. I see, this is more likely, likely a, a proper scenario. When you spawn the beginning of this of a map, that's all you should see is you should see the enemy ships outside the white box. Well, it's, it's really rare that you have ships inside the white box that close to you, but it usually only happens on the large targets. I don't know what the hell my crew were doing, how they missed that many big-ass ships until they were that close to the submarine. I mean, really. Okay, let's turn to about 90 degrees here. And let's see if we can take a peek at what's out there. It's a medium target, so it's probably not going to be very dangerous. It looks like it's just a lone troop ship. So let's lock on here. All right. We'll zoom in here to take a look at what it looks like. Yeah, that's definitely a troop ship. Uh, if you're ever curious as to what kind of ship you're looking at, I can, do, I can do a little button tutorial here since I'm only dealing with one ship here. Uh, you can press B to pull up what I call the book. The book is the identification book. It allows you to switch between, it allows you to flip through the pages, it allows you to, ch to see what ship that is. Obviously, this is not an aircraft carrier. When it is the ship you're looking for, you can press up and down to, sh to uh, rotate between the, the pages of the book. And if we keep going this way, keep going, that's the ship captain. All right, That tells you that is a troop transport. All right. Um, let's sort of turn the book off. And troop transports don't really have that much firepower. They every ship, like I said, every ship does shoot at you. Some are more accurate than others. Some do a lot more damage than others. Troop ships don't do that much damage. 
So I'm going to go ahead and surface. And if he sees me and starts firing at me, I don't care. He's not going to do much to me. I'm going to surface and then torpedo him from there. That way I can actually move a little bit quicker. All right. Zoom in here. All right. Let's turn left a little bit here. Um, there, there. You're again a little bit of button tutorial how to control the submarine. Submarine is uh, submarine speed is based on five buttons, and it's your one, two, three, four, and five keys at the, at the top of the keyboard, not the F keys, just your number keys. One, two, three, four, and five. Uh, your speed is one, two, three, and four. Actually, it's the first six keys. One, two, three, and four controls you, varies your speed. One is the slowest. Four is the fastest. Five stops your submarine. Six puts your submarine in reverse. Um, your submarine's reverse speed is equal to your forward slow speed. So whatever your uh, your slowest speed is, which in this case of this submarine is five on the surface, two underwater, which obviously you you move faster on the surface. Like I said, so all your speeds are going to be faster on the surface. Um, when you're reversing, you don't reverse any faster than five on the surface and two underwater. Um, as we're looking at this screen here, this is what I call the map screen. This map screen is available from the F1 key, from any map, or from any screen. And uh, the lower left hand, the, the bottom screen here is available on any screen, that any tactical screen. So the map screen and any periscope view or bridge. Uh, any other screen is not available. What it does, it gives you the basic information of your ship and the target ship. In the case of what we're looking at here, the left one is your the position of your ship in the water. Depth is obviously how deep you are in the water. Zero means you're on the surface. At one foot or below, obviously you're... Even though at one foot deep, you're not actually underwater, you're considered submerged and you can't use any of the surface views like a periscope or like a TBT or the bridge. Now I'll go into more detail on what those are in a minute. Speed is obviously your speed in knots. We're on the surface, so we're going 20 knots, which is our fastest speed. HDG stands for heading. Heading is how is the direction you're facing in a 360 degree circle. So we're going at roughly 50 degrees to north. So we're 50 degrees, which is why you see our ship pointed at roughly like a, like a 45 degree angle, roughly. Because it's a DOS scheme, it's not going to show exactly 50 degrees. It's going to kind of show a, a close direction as to which way we're facing. The middle box tells you the location of your of your aiming, how, where you're aiming. In the case of the top number, bearing 067, that's where you're looking, like I said in the last uh, mission, that's where you're looking based on a 360 degree circle. Our target is at bearing 065, so it's 65 degrees from north. Loaded bow and loaded stern, those are your loaded torpedoes in the tubes in your ship. Bow torpedoes are obviously the torpedoes that fire from the front of the ship to roughly 89 degrees from the front of your from the front of your ship. Um, it, it kind of varies. It's like 90 degrees, and you could kind of, you, you'll kind of get like half and half. If your target is 90 degrees from your from the north from the bow of your tor <clears throat> bow of your ship, you might get a bow torpedo. You might get a stern torpedo, and it works both ways. 90 degrees either direction. Your stern torpedoes will fire at 90 degrees back all the way around to 180, which is directly behind you. <clears throat> and if you have, if you're, if you're facing, you can't, you can't fire a stern torpedo at a bow target. So if I were to try to fire, if I wanted to fire a stern torpedo at this ship, I couldn't because my note, because he's within the 90 degree arc in front of me, not the 90 degree arc or the 180 degree arc, I should say, behind me. And the game decides which torpedoes to fire. So if I was out of bow torpedoes, I could not fire at this ship. But since I am, I'm going to. So let's fire one bow torpedo. The torpedo is away. And you can tell that the red, the red line is a torpedo. And you see its wake is really long because it's a really fast moving torpedo. We can zoom in here. And the torpedo will hit the ship right in the ass. We're going to turn a little bit here. We use the arrow keys to turn. Uh, we sunk the ship. We can tell because the square disappeared. The square means that tells you what ship you've targeted. And the green dot on the right tells you that you've locked on to it. And then the, the, the numbers that you see on the right box gives you its information. The range from your ship in yards, the speed of the ship, and the course of the ship is going in a 360 degree circle. Um, <clears throat> if you sink your target, the square will disappear and the light will turn red, which means the ship is sunk, guaranteed sunk. Um, to turn your ship, you use the arrow keys left and right. Obviously left turns left, right turns right. And then the opposite of that centers your turn. So if you're turning left, and you want to stop turning left, 
you press right, it'll say rudder centered, and you'll stop turning. Opposite is true with the right. If you're turning right, you want to stop turning, press left, rudder centered, you won't turn anymore. If you want to turn hard left or hard right, you hold shift and press left or right in order to make a harder turn. You'll turn, instead of two degrees at a time, you'll turn, I believe, at four degrees at a time, which is a little bit faster, obviously. <clears throat> in order to stop a hard turn, just press the opposite key. You don't have to press shift. So if you're making a hard left turn, just press right, it'll stop your turn, and vice versa. You don't have to press shift right to stop a hard turn. <coughs> Sorry about that. To control your diving surface, obviously it's your up and down keys. Once you're at zero, you're on the surface, you want to dive, you press down, and you'll begin descending at one foot at a time. Or, yeah, one foot at a time. Um, alternately, if you want to surface and you're underwater, you press up, you'll begin ascending at one foot at a time. If you want to um, descend quickly, you want to crash dive, so you've got a bunch of destroyers coming at you, you press shift down, you'll begin diving at three, three, uh, uh, three feet per you know, instead of one foot at a time, you dive at three feet at a time. Um, and if you want to stop diving, whether slow descent or, or crash dive, you press up and you'll you'll center out. You won't be diving any further. You want to ascend, you press up. If you want to stop your you want, you want to stop ascending, you press down. However, if you press shift up, you cannot stop your ascent. You will blow. It will called blowing emergency tanks. Which you, what you're doing is you're blowing all the water out of your, uh, out of the system, forcing your ship to go straight up as fast as possible. If you, if you're trying to just limit your ascent, you don't want to blow your emergency tanks because you cannot stop, uh, you cannot stop the ascent until you reach the surface. Once you're back on the surface, then you can go back down. Until then, you're going up and you can't stop it, and you're going up at, you're going up at three feet at a time. So if you're just trying to be sneaky and sneak up on a ship and you want to try to ascend a little bit, just press the button, just the press that button. Don't shift up. You're going to be sitting on the surface with a bunch of destroyers going, what are you doing? I think I'm going to shoot you now. Bang, bang, bang. All right, let's move on from that mission. And we'll just float around the ocean a little longer. We only used one torpedo there, so no big deal. You can use arrow keys to move your dot around the, thing, around the uh, screen here. You don't have to worry about your depth or anything. Nothing's going to happen here. <clears throat> All right, on 1220, Japanese forces have seized Brunei on Borneo. All right. Um, the only thing that happens on this screen that, that that really varies is mostly any damage you've taken. If you took any damage from enemy depth charges or shells um, that can be repaired, your ship will be repaired over time. Japanese troops have seized Davao in the Philippines. All right. We have 46 days left. Wake Island has surrendered to invading Japanese forces. All right. Let's just keep floating around here, see if we can come across something. Hong Kong has surrendered Japanese forces. All right. Enemy forces have captured Manila in the Philippines. So by Christmas, we've lost Manila. So if uh, on your first war patrol of this game, if you chose Manila, you're shit out of luck. You've lost Manila. You cannot go back in port there by, by Christmas. But luckily... A, on the same day, a new submarine base is available at Chalot Jap on the southeast coast of Java. So if, um, I assume I pronounced it right. If I didn't, I apologize. So if uh, your base was Manila and you were in your your uh, uh, patrol zone was anywhere over here in the in the west near near China and, and uh, Manila and stuff, you're going to have to go south through the lands and through the shallow water in order to reach this new submarine base. Or try to haul your ass all the way back to Pearl Harbor, which you, unless you're, unless you leave right away, unless you've got like 40 days left, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it to Pearl Harbor. You're going to run out of fuel. You get towed to Pearl Harbor, and you get a nasty letter from your admiral. <laughs>